we're going to do something we've not done for a little while on this channel. We're going to look at some Marvel Legends. <laughs> hey guys, me host Super Sorrow, thank you very much for tuning in. Look what I got. I got a bunch of Marvel Legends. Now these were sent to us thanks to the lovely people over at Hasbro to celebrate the Black Panther uh, brand new legacy collection that is available exclusively here at, at Smith's here in the UK. Now these were gifted to us and were sent to us completely free of charge from Hasbro. So thank you very much Hasbro for sending them through. If you remember I did get the box through about just shot of a week ago now. And obviously with the with me mainly being Star Wars these days, I was kind of like, do I want to put these on the channel? But actually, I do. I do I do miss occasionally doing something else. I I don't, you know. I don't want to, you know, diversify too much, but I do miss doing occasional other things. So today we're going to look at these figures as they were sent through to us from Hasbro. So thank you very much, Hasbro. Um, so these are the brand new Legacy Collection action figures from Marvel Legends. As I say, they are exclusive here to Smiths in the UK. And we do have Black Panther, M'Baku, Eric Killmonger, Nakia and Shuri to take a look at today. And uh, we're going to unbox all of them in this one big video and take a closer look at all the action figures. Now the Legacy Collect Collection is a great way of being able to use all the figures that people may be missing from their collection. The, the, the Legacy line seems to be Marvel Legends answer to like the archive line that we have over on Star Wars Black Series. It's a great way of giving old figures some new paint accents, like new paint accents and putting out the old figures once again. Not mad at that because I've been a collector for a long time and let's face it, there are figures sometimes you miss, or there are figures sometimes that new collectors haven't had a chance to get hold of. So I do understand why it is necessary to revisit some figures that, that we have had previously. Um, especially the Black Panther Wave, because the Black Panther Wave 1 came out, and then Wave 2 took a long time to get to us. Um, so Shuri, Nakia, um, I never reviewed. Never had those figures in my series at all. M'Baku was the bath figure, and I never actually got around to actually finishing that bath figure. So I'm grateful to have M'Baku in this line. Obviously, this is Black Panther that we have seen before. I'm pretty sure, is, is this the Civil War version? Or did they update it after that? I can't remember. But either way, it's nice to have an updated version of Chadwick Boseman's Bat Black Panther as well. And of course, then we've got Eric Killmonger as well, which... Um, I don't think I ever got this version of Eric Killmonger. I'm pretty sure the version I had just was the uh, the one where he's in his military garb. I don't think I ever actually got the Panther variant of Eric Killmonger. So this is a cool bunch of figures to have in my collection. So I'm going to go ahead and bust these out of the packaging. And uh, we'll take a closer look at these figures. Let's jump straight in and jump straight into Black Panther. Because here he is, guys. Black Panther. Really happy to have another version of this. Like, say we've got an updated face sculpt, which is nice as well. Nice looking box. And as you can see at the top there is where it has the Legacy Collection number in there. Uh, the Black Panther logo on the top. On the side, it's just a artist shot of Black Panther. And then on the back, we have a lovely write-up, which states, As the new king of Wakanda, T'Challa struggles to cope with the loss of his father, T'Chaka, but is determined to live up to his great legacy. And we have that lovely shot there on the back. Let's bust him out. Okay, so here he is out of the packaging. Again, a great looking figure with a set of alternate hands, which are the clawed type hands. Pretty sure we had these last time. Uh, but we have got that really nice new face sculpt that's been repainted. The figure itself is really nice as well. Heads on a ball joint there, so you can make him look up and down, left and right. Um, not much in the way of a neck hinge on this one, uh, but yeah, he does look up pretty well. The arms are on little butterfly hinges, so you can rotate his arm back and forth a little bit, um, as well as move his arms around. He's got double hinged elbows, and the hands are on ball joints. You can crunch him around at that waist really well, and he has a swivel. Legs do lift out to the side, as well as forwards and backwards. Top thigh cut there, and double hinged knees. And the feet are on rocker and pivot. Now, I remember rightly, I never used the closed fist hands on mine. I actually switched mine out straight away last time, I remember, because I obviously it's the Black Panther. Um, as much as he does throw his fists, I do like the fact that he does have clawed hands as well. So I like to use the clawed hand to put the sort of like to the ground and have him sort of posed up 
if I can get the posing right and get the hand to like touch the ground and have him looking up, it just looks like a pantherish. And uh, yeah, but yeah, it's such a great looking figure. Really like the way he looks. Great paint apps on this one as well. Just an all around great figure. And like I say, those those second hands are really nice. And of course we can do the head swap as well. So let's put this forward. Um, the actual neck piece on this one's actually um, put on the actual body itself. I remember I had, I had one previously where this part was like loose. I think that was the purple one, wasn't it, that did that. So we can swap out the heads. And as you can see very easily to swap the heads on and off. And then we can have the unmasked head. Ah, that's what I did last time. So... <clears throat> if you use the open palm hand... Um, I used both of them actually. If we put both of the open palm hands on... And sort of get him stood. I'm mean, looking down a little bit. If we can get him to balance, you can actually get him to hold the Black Panther helmet. That's what I did last time. You know that there's that that thing where he there's that pose where he's like looking at the helmet. You can kind of if you play around with it. You can kind of get him to uh, look at the helmet, which is pretty nice. I think I actually put it, his hands like inside it almost. But yeah, there's a way of getting it so that you can get his claws to kind of catch around the helmet. And then he's like looking at the helmet of the panther. Almost like he's, you know, communicating with his father. But either way, a great figure and yeah, really nice to have in the line. Sticking with the Panthers in this collection, let's go on to Eric Killmonger. Now he's got the gold accented version of the costume, which is very cool. And he comes with some nice accessory pieces. Uh, again, it's got a nice artist render on the side there. I always like you can see the eyes of his. I thought that was really, really menacing looking. And uh, I can't wait to see. I hope they've captured that on there. It's glaring a bit. I want to try and get up close and see if they've captured that. But yeah, because I always liked the eyes on there. And of course, we've got a little write up on the back, which states... A warrior of physical and mental strength, Eric Killmonger slashes into battle with unrivaled ten intensity. And yeah, just such a nice looking figure. So let's bust him out. So here is the Eric Killmonger figure out of the packaging as well. Same set of hands. I believe they're identical to the T'Challa one. Yeah, they are. They've just got the gold, gold colouring on them. So we're not going to spend too much time on them as we've already seen them. Uh, but he does have the helmet, and yes, you can't really see the eyes, which is a shame. Um, I wish they'd have gone for the open eye section, we could actually see his eyes, because I always thought that, that was really menacing looking, when you could see his eyes through it. I like his co his costume, though, because he does have the uh, sort of like feet on his, like with the clawed feet, which is nice. And I like the fact that he's got the more leopard-like appearance on his, which is very cool. Again, that head is very nice. The sculpt is very decent and looks just like him. But we can pop it off very easily to pop on the panther head. And again, that does look so much more sinister. And again, I'm loving that leopard-like appearance there. Very cool indeed. He's got the more clawed hand there as well. But we can swap it out if we want to either have two sets of clawed hands or two sets of grab hands. I do like one clawed, one grab hand. I think that's going to be the better of the two options. Um, and we do have some accessories with this figure as well. Uh, but looking at articulation, he can look up a little bit more than um, Black Panther can, it seems. He does look up a lot more. I'm not sure. Let's, go double, let's double check that on Panther. Yeah, Panther does look up, but not as much as Killmonger. He looks up a lot further. And you can crunch him around again. Mid, uh, you've got the crunch, the swivel, yeah, everything else. The but the butterfly hinge moves a lot more better on this one. Could have been that the child just wasn't warmed up, but no, this is an older figure. This is an older figure. So that butterfly hinge is not probably, probably non-existent, but this one has got the nice crunch on it. Look at that. 
Um, legs as well lift out pretty far, forwards, backwards, top thigh cut, double hinged knee, and feet are on rocker and pivot with holes for display pegs, should you wish to use that. Again, figures look very nice indeed. Loving the paint apps on this one. He does come with two accessories, as I, as I did mention. Um, we do have the spears and stuff, so they're very cool looking. And then the like ceremonial style sword. I don't know what I don't know what you would call it. It's like the African weapon inspired sword, isn't it? Of the time. <laughs> It doesn't hold them too well though, even in that open palm hand, it doesn't really hold them all too well. And I've got a feeling that's going to just slide through. Yeah, it's not very, not very ideal. I, I don't picture him using weapons that much, to be honest. I would picture him going, you know, toe to toe, fist to fist, like he does in the film. But either way, a great figure. Um, it's nice to have the panther head on. But for Eric Killmonger... I do like to have the face on, so either whatever you choose to do, it's a great figure and well worth being in the collection. Okay, so now we're moving into figure territory of figures that I've never actually owned. We've done the first two, so let's now move into Shuri. Shuri is a figure I never actually owned the first time around. I, um, I remember when the, when the Wave 1 came out and sure it wasn't included, I was very upset and I actually bought the basic kids version, which came with these gloves. Uh, for like 10 quid from like Smith back in the day. But it's nice to finally have a Marvel Legends version of Shuri. And again, lovely artist rendering shot on the side there. Really like the look of that. And on the back, again, another great artist rendering shot. That is just beautifully done. And we can see the little writer, which states, the mastermind behind some of Wakanda's most advanced technologies, Shuri designs and distributes vibranium-powered gear to Wakanda's greatest warriors and allies. I think that she's going to play a big role in helping Riri Williams get her armor. I really do. I think Riri's armor is going to be made uh, from vibranium from Wakanda to give her, like, the ultimate Iron Man suit. Or it's going to be reinforced by vibranium, I think. Either way, can't wait to see the new film. And the new figures look awesome. Okay, let's bust Shuri out of the packaging and take a close look at this awesome figure. So here is our Shuri out of the packaging. And we do have the two panther head um, armor pieces that she pops on her hands as weapons. Which are pretty cool. They're little accessory pieces that pop out the end of them. I wish those came out, to be honest. They probably do, but I don't want to pull on too much. In case I break them, but yeah, we've got we've got these little like little pieces that come out. I wish, like I say, I wish that wasn't detachable. Um, the figure itself, really nice face sculpt, painted really well. Um, she can look up pretty well, down, left and right with some head pivot. How we're we looking on the arm front, so arms lift up and swivel, single hinged elbows though. Um, hands are on ball joints, no butterfly hinge. You can sort of move around at the waist swivel there, but no further swivel after that. So just the top crunch, which doesn't crunch back and forth too much. So hindering the articulation a little bit there. Legs lift up and pushes the skirt piece up, which is nice. So that does flow up and down with her body as well. So we can get some good posing in. She has a top thigh cut, double hinge knees, and the feet are on rockers. And pivot, and she does have display peg holes. Let's go ahead and put the little uh, arm pieces on here. How do they slot in? Let's have a go. So you push her hand in and just click them to her arms. Ah, nice and simple. It's nothing too difficult. I don't like the elbow hinges on the female on these old female characters. They always feel like they're going to pop off on me. Really don't like the way they feel. I, I always said that about the uh, the. The ones for Star Wars as well, the, the arms always feel dead flimsy on the female figures. But there you go. She can have the uh, arm pieces on and it does look pretty cool. Like I say, I never had Shuri the first time around, so it is nice to finally have her in the series this time around. Okay, next up is Marvel's Nakia. I think that's how you say it anyway. If I'm mispronouncing that, I do sincerely apologise. Um, again, a figure I've never had. Really nice looking figure. Let's look at that face sculpt in there. Yeah, that looks nice. Nice artist render in there. Spinning around to the back. Again, a nice shot there too. 
with a little write-up which states a member of the Again, I'm going to I'm going to completely butcher this. I do apologize. A member of the Dora Milaje, Milaje, yeah, Nakia protects the reigning Black Panther with strength and poise. Poise, poise. I can't read. <laughs> We're going to move swift, swiftly on and get her out of the packaging. <laughs> okay, guys, here she is out of the packaging, looking pretty nice. Uh, again, a bit of a different figure. The face sculpt is really good on this one, actually. I really do like that. It looks just like her. Uh, you can make it look up and down, left and right. Bit of head pivot there, too. Um, again, though, no no butterfly hinge, but we can move the arms up and rotate. Single hinged elbows. Oh, I hate those elbows that slide into place. I really don't like them. And the hands are on ball joints. Uh, you can crunch her around at the abdomen waist, but no further waist swivel. Uh, she has this little cape piece, which is very similar to, or it reminds, it feels reminiscent of Scarlet Witch, I don't know why, uh, if it was complete, but yeah, it does, I like the uh, sort of back slot on it, and um, we could, that gives a plenty of movement for articulation in the lower legs, top thigh cut, double hinge your knee, feet are on rocker and pivot, uh, no boot cut, they could have put a boot cut there, but they didn't, uh, feet are, I've got the, the pegs should you wish to use a display base. She does come with uh, two grip hands because she does have her accessory pieces to hold. Let's see if we can get those in a hand. Oh, stretch those out a little bit. Ooh, that, that, that did stress the plastic a little bit too much than I wanted to there. But it worked, and it's in a hand. So one there, and one here. There's no real easy way of doing this, other than prying our hands open. There we go. Yeah. And there she is with the uh, two display pieces. That's nice, is that, actually. That is a great looking pose. I do like this figure a lot. She's very cool. And she's quite, uh, she, she's larger if you compare it to like Shuri and stuff. Shuri's quite small and petite. Um, this carries a little bit taller. I'll put it in this Charla as well. Yeah, these do look cool together. Really nice figure. I, I honestly really do like the way she looks. Could be my favorite from the wave so far, this Naki figure, to be honest. It's nice to get Shuri. I mean, I'm a big fan of Shuri and it's nice to have her, but this Naki figure is actually really cool. Yeah, she was the one that's definitely worth you know the collection just to show you again I put her legs together and stand her up <clears throat> yeah I like it she looks good nice figure and again the, the paint apps on it and stuff are really nicely done as well like the silver and the red with the gold accents are very cool and uh, yeah there's no bleeding of the paint anywhere that I can see it's all very well painted so and that face sculpt is probably the best face sculpt of the wave. Well done Hasbro on that one. I'm, I'm actually really, really, uh, I am a fan of that figure. That's really nice. Final figure of the wave, and it is the daddy of the wave. It's M'Baku, the big fig. This was the bath figure the first time around. He's such a beast of a figure, and he's awesome. Uh, so we have M'Baku from Black Panther. Um, artist rendering on the side there is really cool. Yeah, nice shot on the back as well, with a writer which states, M'Baku, the formidable leader of the Jabri tribe, is faced with the choice of challenging T'Challa for the throne or joining forces to defend Wakanda from malevolent forces. Really cool. Let's break him out the box. Yeah, he is an absolute beast of a bath figure. You can see why he was the bath, to be fair. He's such a decent, chunky figure. He's massive. And uh, he's got his, uh, oh, the other figures have just fallen over. He's got his uh, big uh, staff piece as well, which is nice. Uh, very cool. He's it, not, the, the figure itself isn't actually big. It's the things that are on him that make him big. Like the, the shoes on his feet are quite chunky. They've given him this big skirt piece, which goes over the top of another skirt piece. And they've, they've just given him things that bulk him up. So the figure itself is actually probably probably no bigger than than uh, the other figures, but they've just beefed him up with all these plastic accessory pieces that go over the top of him to make him appear bigger. So, but he is an absolute monster. 
and you can tell because when you put him at the side of there you go, he is a good a good inch a good, a good inch taller should we say so yeah he was worthy to be the bath in the previous wave looking at the figure itself though the head is on a ball joint so you can make it look up down left and right and um, the arms lift out to the side there's the sing there's the uh, single hinge sorry the bicep hinge double hinged elbows there that do wrap around crunch at the abdomen there which is pretty well done uh, waist swivel pretty nice legs lift out to the side but are completely hindered by this cloth piece so there's no way of actually using any of the lower leg articulation other than to swivel it which does swivel really easily knees we have got double hinged knees there which is nice um, and the has got display peg holes, should you wish to use a display base. Not that you're going to need to, because the figure is that damn chunky. There, it firmly stands. He's going nowhere. <laughs> he isn't going nowhere. And uh, yeah, he comes with his, uh, his big chunky staff piece as well, which is nice, which just slides into his hand and stretches it out. So you, can, you could get him to hold that with two hands as well, which would be very easily done. Probably by doing that. Oh, I fell out the other hand. Oh no. Try that again. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool looking figure indeed, though. I like I say, really do like this one. It is a great bath figure, and I've never owned this figure, so it's nice to finally have him in hand to see what everybody was talking about when this figure came out very well nicely done and finally let's bring everyone back in because this is a great wave of figures and yes it is a wave of figures that have previously come out but let's face it in this wave we are getting you know both black panther the Umbaku bath figure, we're getting Eric Killmonger, we're getting Shuri who came as part of a different wave to the original wave anyway, and then we're getting uh, the Naki figure as well. So it's, an, it's a very well-rounded wave. And we already know that we're going to be getting another figure in this in the, in the this collection because we're getting um, Agent Ross. He's going to be back and he's going to be a part of this sort of figure wave as well. He's coming as a part of the next wave of figures for Wakanda Forever. But he will be in a Legacy Collection box which is kind of cool. So I can't wait to see what Marvel do next for the Legacy Collection. I've got a feeling it's going to be maybe, ho hopefully something around maybe Age Voltron. It's been a while since we've had sort of those kind of figures. And it, or would, would it be cool to maybe look back at the original uh, Avengers movie and give us a line of figures from that? Who knows? But um, yeah, it, th this has been a great little wave to review. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it. So I just want to say to you guys, um, I've, I've enjoyed reviewing these Marvel Legends wave. No, this isn't a thing of me saying that I'm going back to reviewing everything and everything and everything. That isn't what's happening here. Um, these were sent to me by Hasbro and I wanted to review them on the channel. Um, and occasionally I will review things that aren't Star Wars on the channel because I do have other interests. I do still like other things. I just don't collect them like I used to do. So I don't really... <laughs> I always, every time I put something out that I want to put out, sometimes I see comments from you guys sort of saying, oh, I thought you only like this now was now, and I don't want to see that because that just upsets me, annoys me. I collect anything I want to collect. It's my channel. <laughs> Let's face it. <laughs> like I did the Stranger Things capsules, and I got a few comments, so, uh, you know, why are you doing that? And like, because I want to. Because <laughs> I wanted to do it. <laughs> So if you see some occasional little videos like this where it's just me reviewing something, it's not a sign of anything. It's not a change to the channel. It's just me having a little bit of fun with some figures um, or something that I've been sent or something that I wanted to buy for me personally. So just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> But guys, I hope you have enjoyed this review. I've enjoyed making this, this video for you. Uh, it was nice to do all the figures together rather than singly. I think doing that singly would have taken up a lot of time on the channel. Like This is, this is what I used to say to you guys. <coughs> when I was reviewing Marvel Legends and I had Black Series and everything else, I had so much to review and I was doing each figure individually because that's what I thought you guys enjoyed more. But I'm doing this my way. And I'm just I'm doing it as a wave, and I hope you guys have enjoyed sitting with me for the last 20 minutes and going through this wave of figures. 
Let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. You may get shouted out in the next video. But, guys, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, may the force be with you. Bye! <laughs>